You know, I've been around the game industry for a while, working inside the game industry pretty much as like resellers and uh, retail and ordering and all this stuff. And I've started to kind of realize something, and I still have friends that work in retail with video games at, at a level that they'll actually, they can actually see what's going on. If you work at like Walmart and you go up and you take stuff out of the glass just to sell, you're probably not uh, super, uh, I don't want to say aware, but you're not you're not in the know with how much those games are costing and what the store is actually making and everything. And I did video game work for retail stores for man a good part of my life. Ah, uh, 2000, starting in 2006, 2006, 2006. I was working at GameStop in 2006, and I, I kind of mentioned this before. And after that, I got an offer from a store that was just opening up. I don't really want to say their name because I actually left there pretty recently, um, maybe six months ago. And um, I don't want to say their name completely because I don't want to out anybody or anything because I still have friends that work at different places. Uh, maybe not necessarily there, but other places too. And there's a couple things that are kind of concerning me right now about the video game industry. And I want to talk about that for a minute. Now... There's a lot of guys, a lot of people that don't know how much things cost for stores when they buy video games or systems or accessories. And you know what? I'm going to shed light on that in this video. I'm going to tell you guys exactly what these stores are making on the games, on the systems, on the accessories, and basically what they try to do when you get to the register to get more money out of you. Now, if you're not interested in this in, in this subject, it's not a big deal. I, got, uh, I have another Switch video coming, of course, and then I have a video I wanted to talk about the PlayStation 4 Pro. Um, both of those are coming. I'm probably shooting those uh, tonight, and I'll uh, probably have those up either if I can get if I can get either one of them up tonight. I will. Otherwise, it'll be up tomorrow. Um, and make sure you just keep an eye on my Twitter because I'll I'll do updates and stuff as I'm shooting, so you guys know when things are going up. Um, and I'll put the Twitter handle right here real quick. It's at at Spawn Wave Media. So check that out. Um, and. So I wanted to start this off by saying, like I said, I worked at GameStop, I moved up in the company pretty quickly to assistant manager, and eventually I realized that to get to store manager, you need to wait for someone to get fired. Now, the turnover at GameStop is is tremendous. They are, it is like a revolving door there. People are coming in and they're leaving. People are coming in and they're leaving. It's, it's for a lot of people, it's a college job, it's a high school job, um, and after that, if you do end up staying there for a while, you pretty much have to wait for somebody to either either just move on to something else, uh, get caught stealing or something and get fired, or get transferred because they're moving. There's Those are really the only ways you can get essentially upgraded from assistant manager to store manager, and the gap in pay between assistant manager and store manager is tremendous. There's When you get store manager, there's benefits, there's a set salary. You have to work more and you have to do a little more, but for the amount that you make going from assistant manager to store manager, it's worth it. I realized in the district part that I was in, I was probably never going to store manager. So I had an offer from another store that basically said, hey, we could use you for this, 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 we'll pay you more. Why don't you come over here? The store was just opening. Actually, it was opening across the street, which is really funny. So I decided, hey, I'll go there, I'll take a chance. And I did. And you know what? I, I liked the job there. It was great. I was basically in charge of, think about an entire video game store, essentially. And I was, for the most part, uh, eventually, I became in control of ordering, running the store, even paying rent. Like I got, it got that serious, and it wasn't a big store. It was like a like a smaller chain store. So all of that made sense to kind of fall on uh, not like a corporate office because there wasn't one. Basically, somebody locally who could do all of that, and that actually ended up being me after a while. Now this store also did repairs, and that's kind of where my technical knowledge came in because we didn't have a repair person. Myself and one of my employees, we had to basically learn everything, and I already had a lot of technical knowledge before that with computers and then eventually now game systems. So I ended up having to do everything, 360, PS3, uh, cell phones, Wii's, DS lights, you name it, I was working on it. So, But I realized when I was doing things like ordering that these games that, you, that come out and they're $60, okay? So you gotta go to the store, you gotta buy $60. Those stores are making, uh, okay, so here you go. Um, the, the, let's say the game is $59.99 MSRP at launch. Call of Duty just came out, right? So you go to the store and you buy the game. It's sixty dollars. Here's the money. Thank you. How much do you think that store just made on that sale? Okay, so I'll put it up here. It's sixty dollars. I'll give you a second. Okay, so the store is making 
they're buying this from the wholesalers, okay? There's one wholesaler pretty much that I could find for the entire East Coast. So they're providing it to everybody, so I know what they're providing it for. The store is making $52. Well, the store is buying that game for $52, selling it for $60. And that's not all, because remember, they have to pay the employee who is getting it out of the glass. They have to pay the employee who is stocking it on the glass, you know, putting it in there, uh, who's accounting for it and everything. And it's, you end up making next to nothing on the new games. In fact, this is the reason GameStop had to get so heavy into trade-ins to stay around. If they just sold new games and no used games, they would have been gone a long time ago. There's no way they would survive. Because you have to get volume, but the problem is you have to also pay employees. There's a lot of bills with business. People don't realize this. You have employees, insurance, rent, um, uh, utilities, uh, taxes. The t taxes at the end of the year, almost every business imaginable that's not Apple or Microsoft or something like that tries to show a loss. That's why you'll see all of these companies trying to show that their division sucks. Movies do it all the time. Movies are the worst for this. They try their hardest, their absolute hardest to make it look like a movie does not actually make money. It grosses a lot of money, but it doesn't make a lot of money because these stupid expenses they pile up next to it that make no sense. They'll sell advertising to themselves for an inflated amount to make sure that it all evens out at the end. But <clears throat> the taxes on these stores are tremendous. You end up getting to the end of the year and realizing you have to pay twenty to thirty thousand dollars to the government for some reason and it's tough you know you get your accountant in there they want like four grand for doing it and it, it ends up turning the whole thing so the and you end up basically you end up having to save for those taxes at the end of the year the entire year every month you put into like a basically a separate account just hoping hoping that the taxes come out to either that amount or a little less because it's it's scary at the end of the year when you when you get there with a business and you realize you have to start paying the government money um, and it's it's tough but these stores are getting these these games for you know fifty two dollars and then they're reselling them for sixty, and Walmart is okay doing that because Walmart wants to pull you in. They want to sell you the game, they want to sell you groceries, and they want to sell you like a couch or something while you're there, all at once. So they keep the games there even if it's losing the money, which I can tell you right now, Walmart they are losing money in their games right now. Uh, they're only doing that so that you go there as a one stop shop. You know you're not going to Food Lion for your food and then going there for your games, or you're not going to Home Depot. You know, or you're not going to Ashley Furniture or whatever for your furniture. You're going there for that. And they want you to go to Walmart, not go to any of the small stores, which kind of sucks, to be honest, because the small stores are the ones that, are, that will give you, usually give you, better customer service. If you're a small store, do your best to give the customer a good experience, you know, because that's all you can do to set yourself apart from Walmart. And usually you can't match their prices. So at least give the customer good customer service. That's what I always try to do when I worked at a store like that. I would try to be as personal as possible and just, you know, try to give them a good experience, you know, so they're not going to Walmart or Target and just dealing kind of with a faceless employee who is not really going to pay attention to you much. So what happens is these stores, the smaller ones in general, they have to do trade-ins, of course. And that turns into a whole debate about trading your games in, is it worth it, you know. And honestly, if you're not going to play the game, and you genuinely like the store you go to, and it's a small store, uh, I would give, I would trade in a few games, honestly, because it will help them tremendously. It'll help them more than if you go there and you just buy a new game. It'll help them so much more if you go trade games in and then get the new game. You know, it's going to help them. So you can just still go buy it. They'll still get some money from it, not a lot. Definitely not enough to stay in business. They would have to sell. So if you sell these games, you're probably getting about $5. The smaller ones are because they can cut things like payroll and stuff. They'll probably get about five dollars from that sale. They would have to sell a <laughs> hundred copies just to make five hundred dollars, and that doesn't sound like a lot. But if you're at the store, that's that's a hundred transactions. Okay, so that's a lot. You know, that's a lot of business you have to do just to make five hundred dollars. And if your rent is three thousand dollars, that means you then have to sell six hundred copies just to cover your rent for the month, and that's a lot. So. Um, this is pretty much the reason why uh, stores in general, Kmart did it and Sears, and then if you look around, you see a lot of video game stores kind of going away. Um, retail, it's not as popular as it once was. Now, it's tough because the smaller stores, like I say, have a hard time with this, and the systems don't help either. As much as people look at like a video game system, like the PS4 Pro just came out, right? So that is $400 for a PS4 Pro. $39.99, or three ninety nine ninety nine. of course they want to take that penny off there, but it's $400. So if that system's 400 
you would assume that it would make an okay percentage, right? So it's $400, and how much do you think a store pays for that $400 system? I'll, like I said, I'll give you a minute. You could try to kind of give me a guess. And, uh, okay, it's a $400 system like that. Okay, the store is buying it. And I, I know this, I know exactly how much this is because I talked to one of my friends who was actually doing the ordering for PS4 Pros. I didn't know how hard they'd be to get, and I was kind of on the fence about getting one. I just wanted to make sure I could get one if I wanted one. Okay, they are paying, they're paying $392 and like 58 cents, some weird, some weird change amount. And the only reason I, like I said, I know this is because I actually sent a message to a, a friend who's still working in there, and I don't know why these companies don't have a sign. You, you think the company would make a sign like non-disclosure agreements? They don't. It's it's weird because we, we see everything. We see all the financials and all this stuff. You think they'd have you, they never had me sign one. They never had them sign one, so I don't know. Um, but th that's the only reason I know the wholesale number for this. Now, I've known this for a while. For example, for the th new 3DS XL, that sucked. The new 3DS, that sucked too because you, I would buy it for $198 and then I would put it on the shelf for $199.99. Now, how much sense does that make in your guys' mind to do that? Uh, because that even the 3DS games are like $34.50 or something like that wholesale and it's, it's just the weirdest thing. So, all these retail stores are not making any money on these new games, but they keep stocking it because they need the trade-ins. But what happens now, because of because physical media is going away and we just have digital, there's not much you can do. There's no trade-ins. I can tell you now, I can tell you absolutely now, retail physical sales are down dramatically from what they were with the 360 and the PS3. Um, that's just because people are buying digital. You know, there's nothing to trade in. These people don't have any way to make profit margins. And that's just the way it is. So a lot of smaller stores are going to start going away. Walmart will keep doing it because it's not hurting them enough to actually have them get rid of it. They, Walmart wants to be a one-stop shop. They want to do everything. The one near me over here changes your oil while you shop. Like, I, we're getting to the point probably where they'll start selling, like, coffins. So you can pretty much go in there, get your baby stuff. You can literally live your whole life in Walmart almost, you know? Um... And so they're not going away. Target might. I can honestly see Target getting out of it. The way that they seem to just throw their new games away sometimes with buy two, get one freeze. Best Buy is definitely going to get out of it. I can tell you that now just because they... Best Buy is interesting. I think they're hurting the most out of everyone because their, their games are not helping them. The one near me actually downsized. They moved from a big, big Best Buy to like a small Best Buy. So I can tell you now Best Buy is downsizing because I don't think... They're making the money they were. I don't think, I don't know if games necessarily are the big reason. I can tell you it's probably not, but I know that they're just not in a good place right now. And GameStop is definitely not in a good place. They were closing stores the past couple years, uh, and it's just, uh, I know a person that works there, and they've been downsizing hours to where it's like one person on at a time, and it's it's interesting. But I can tell you now, a lot of these stores are struggling because the game market is, is not helping them. And it's not good for games. You need a store that can push things like systems. I, I, of course you can order online, that, that's fine, you can do that. But are we gonna get to a point where everything's order online and we never have to go outside or interact with people or do anything? Because that seems like a really weird, a really weird world if you think about it. I mean, there's still stuff, you still have to buy food, I guess. Although Amazon's doing Amazon Fresh now, <laughs> where they'll bring you your groceries to your door. But it's, a, it's an odd, odd world to live in where we're going to just basically not have video game stores. And that, that actually hurts me more than anyone, probably because I remember going to like, this is going to be, this is going to be pretty old for a lot of you guys, but I remember going to like Funko Land, for example, and playing Super Nintendo games in Funko Land. And it was awesome, you know, I, I like that feel of the, of the store when you go there and it's fun. Not when it's corporate, like, like a Walmart or even like GameStop, it's like super corporate. Funko Land was, was one of my favorite stores back in the day, and there were other mom-and-pop stores I went to where I'd rent games, and they were fine too, because they were like, you know, personable and everything. It wasn't just like a rush to get you in, kick you through the register, take your money and get you out. And I don't know, I kind of missed that experience from, from way back when. Like I said, I'm, I'm 28, I'm going to be 29 next month, and it's maybe it's a little different for me than opposed to like the 18-year-olds now today where they have a little less experience with that because it's just not around anymore but I don't know it's kind of weird and uh, but that's just my thoughts on that I will tell you though the way video games are going you probably will see any any stores that are that are like mom and pop stores go away they probably won't open a lot of chains will start closing and uh, it's I just don't think it's good for the overall overall 
video game scene. If anything, they want to keep growing video games in general. They don't want to have to have reports coming out that video game stores are closing, you know, GameStop's closing X amount of stores, this chain shut down, and then they want to tell you that the video game market is good when I mean, you start seeing, seeing things like that and it's not good. So, but those are just my thoughts. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, they never had me sign any kind of disclosure. I don't want to say any names just because I don't want to be I don't know. I don't want to be mean or anything. I don't want to tell them to give away their secrets for any specific store or anything. But if you have any questions about the retail aspect of video games, ordering, how much things cost, I have no problem telling you guys. It's not a big deal to me. Um, but definitely, uh, definitely like and subscribe if you had a good time. And leave some comments down below, like I said, just asking questions. And again, if you're not following me yet, follow me on Twitter so you can get updates about videos coming out. And uh, I will talk to you guys later. Like I said, a couple videos coming up. Uh, I'm going to try to get one up tonight. If not, they'll both be out tomorrow on Friday. I'll have more time over the weekend, too. And we'll, we'll do a couple other videos. So I will see you guys then.